Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, everyone out there in Internet Radio Land, and welcome to another delightful episode of uh, Critique Corner with uh, me, Daniel Parker, and me, DB Fastbinder. I almost stole the opening. I said, you know, it's his channel. He should get to introduce himself <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> no, know my lane. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, yes. Uh, welcome. Welcome, as always. Um, and uh, if uh, uh, if you're returning, welcome back. Uh, if you're new, uh, well, first of all, um, hit the like button. Sub uh, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications. Um, <clears throat> so what we do uh, is we start off every show with our thing of the week, which is uh, some media we've been consuming. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to uh, box office and also uh, home video and digital uh, uh, charts. And then we get into our topics. And um, <clears throat> so for thing of the week. Um, oh, whoops. I yeah. was behind the ball there. Let me go ahead and get That's the screen right. shared. Okay, so all right, uh, so I guess uh, DB, you're gonna go first. I guess I am. All right, so uh, here we go. So my thing of the week is uh, I've been slowly watching through Spy Family. It, it's spelled Spy X Family, but it's, apparently you're supposed to leave out the X because Japanese anime titles are confusing. <laughs> uh, I've been slowly watching through with a couple of friends, and we finally finished the first season which was 25 episodes long and split into two halves over the course of 2022. Mm. So for those who are unfamiliar with the series, first off, what, what parts of the internet have you not been hanging out in? <laughs> if they're all weeb oriented, you've been seeing Anya yes. and you've been seeing pictures of your, this guy, maybe not so much, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I remember when the show first came out, it was the, the joke was what the all the weebs are actually in, in love with a woman who's of age since <laughs> when? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> what ups, what topsy turvy world is this? <laughs> yes. So, for the, but enough about meme talk. Got yes. just got distracted there. So, for those who haven't seen this, uh, it's basically set in a fictionalized uh, Germany where there's like an East Germany and a West Germany who had been at war. Now they're at peace, but there are, aspect, there are elements of the two governments trying to create war. And so it's like Westanzia, Ostanzia. I'm just going to call them East and West Germany because it's less confusing. Uh, it's uh, West Alice and Ostania. Okay. So I'm going to stick, I'm going to keep it to the East and okay, West okay, Germany because okay. I'm not going <laughs> to keep it straight. Yeah. Uh, so Lloyd here is the top spy from West Germany. He's infiltrating East Germany, but as part of his mission, he they're, they're trying to get to this bad guy who's doing bad things. And they figure that the, one of the best vectors to get in touch with him is that his uh, kid goes to a very uh, elite prep school. And so Lloyd needs a family. So he proceeds to grab Anya here, who is psychic due to government programs, mm -hmm. and she manages to get selected by him because she can read his mind and knew exactly what to say to make him <laughs> make him want to choose her. And then he also needs a fake wife because it's a very traditional society. So he ends up married to Yor here, who is secretly an assassin who wanted to get married because single women were seen with suspicion and sometimes taken away by the uh, East German government. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she's she's secretly a hit woman for the mob. Yeah. <laughs> despite being the sweetest person in the world. <laughs> because, um, and the reason that this, the reason this possibly works out is that she thinks she's the good guy. Now, and, and so te here, I, I think that my review of it as an anime is that it has its perks, but especially in the second half of the first season, it's better as a manga. Mm -hmm. uh, because what what struck me, and this is something that my friends and I started noticing, is that the series is very... It feels like there should be more urgency than there actually is. 
Yeah. Yeah, I I I, uh, I noticed that too when I was watching the show. I'm like, the fr- the first half of it I thought was really was really good, really well done. And but then yeah, then you get to the second half and it kind of like the story seems to grind to a halt because they're doing all these, you know, slice of life type stuff. Yes, wacky slice of knife, slice of knife, <laughs> slice of life scenarios. Yeah. So. Uh, and when you're reading the manga, that doesn't really bother you as much because you're just, you know, you're reading through it. You're reading, you're blitzing through it at your own pace. Cause I don't know about you, but like if I get a, unless it has like a lot of text in it, I can blast through most manga volumes in between 30 to 60 minutes, depending. Yeah. Uh, so you read through multiple stories, you have yourself a good a half hour and you're satisfied. But when you're watching it in animated format, uh, the two of the like uh, they they were typically doing a lot of half episodes to cover some of these little incidents. Yeah, yeah. So you start noticing, huh? Nothing much seems to be happening here. Mm-hmm. And what took you like five minutes to read is taking twelve minutes to play out. And I think that's an, a frequent problem with slice of life anime that come from a manga, is that the pacing between a comic and a and a show is very different. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, comic, you can... I actually don't have one just sitting right here. A comic, you can flip through. You can go back a page if you missed something. You can... Yeah, you something can, like this. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can... You can if, you, if a part seems yeah. boring, you can skip over it and get to the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but you're, you're controlling the pace at which you read it. Where, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you're... Um, if you're watching a show, you're at the mercy of the pace of the, the thing. It's why so many JRPGs anymore have a skip text button where you just chop, you just cut off what they're saying. I play, <clears throat> play through Persona 5. I can't tell you how many times, like, I, I almost never bother to actually hear the whole line because, like, okay, read it. It's like, on. Hey, we need to click. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have yeah, that option yeah. when you're watching an anime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, now that that's kind of the negatives of it. If you just accept that the story isn't really going to progress this season, like it's going to, the, the high point of the season, I think is the mission where they get the dog. Mm, yeah. And that, yeah. and also ended weird because that was the season cliffhanger, but then they had an adapt an adapted story from the end of the first, like one of the early mo- manga volumes about them going to the aquarium and getting and uh, seeing penguins right yeah yeah and he, which is he a has good, to, yeah which is a good yeah. story like it, it's a funny little story but it's so weird to have it there because unless you knew the context that it was a bonus manga chapter like i yeah. i thankfully i had read the series because my, my friends were kind of confused by that like wait what, what happened to the dog and the bomb plot and everything else like why why are we at the aquarium now yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I'll also yeah. say that it's kind of appropriate that the second half of the season has an opening song that is much more laid back and honestly less good than the first one. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it, it fits the tone. <clears throat> yeah. Now, I don't want to crap too much on this series because I it is good. Um, mm-hmm. I'll say that the animation is usually good. Uh, they, they've managed to adapt a lot of great scenes from the manga pitch perfectly. Yeah, that there is one scene where Yor uses her superhuman strength to kick a car off the road that they completely botched the uh, execution of compared to the to the comic, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, which like what's funny about that? That was the scene I kept saying, "Oh man, guys, next episode there's going to be something awesome." Yeah, I, I can't wait to show you guys. What the the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Ninja Toe, good to see hey, you. Also, the animators love animating your love yeah. it you yeah. can tell that she is the wife of everyone there and i'm sure there was at least one fist fight over who got to animate certain scenes uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes every everyone loves your even her brother <laughs> yes <laughs> what a siscon uh, yeah <laughs> but uh overall uh, i'm glad i watched it through to the end I think I'm mostly going to continue reading it as a comic because that's its best format. Mm-hmm. I, I'm reminded of something your boy Zach said recently that every character has an ideal format. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, you, Holy Ninja says it's the yeah. only time where they don't have to animate a teenager. Yeah, we were we were commenting before you got in here that yeah. uh, this is the one time when the the waifu of the season is a, is of age, unlike say the dress up darling girl. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I, I would say that uh, what, I, what I can also say is that I would say read the manga, watch the anime, and if a if an episode isn't appealing to you skip to the next skip the se uh, second half of it or skip to the next mm -hmm. because there's only a very s small slice that are actually plot important yeah yeah i, I uh i i've i've of course i i watched the anime uh, and as okay uh, yeah as as i was yeah you know, i've already mentioned but um or, or as it was probably evident um but and i've read some of the manga uh but i i need to go back to go back to the manga i think only read i've only read like the first three volumes okay but, so uh, yeah. the, the anime has outpaced you a little bit then okay i want to say it's like four or five in okay your finally really gets her own story in volume eight that oh the, the, she, she gets a real mission and that that was pretty exciting I, that's some that's some crazy action there so that one if they if and when that season two comes out i might just skip to those episodes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because yeah, she needs she needs more to do than to uh, than bring Anya her gym clothes, which she, <laughs> Anya didn't need her gym clothes that day. <laughs> womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So that that's all I have to say about this. All right. So, meanwhile, you went to media from that other island that makes a lot of media. Yes. Uh, so uh, I got on to uh, season two of Clarkson's Farm, uh, which uh, dropped last week. Um, and of course, we talked about Jeremy Clarkson uh, about three weeks ago on the show. Um, he got canceled, and it's kind of hard to disagree with people not wanting to work with him. Yeah. Uh, and I'll probably put a card on the uh, on the replay of this video for that that video um but uh <clears throat> so you know what we're talking about uh, what we mean but um but anyway so uh season two dropped and if uh you didn't watch season one i'll, I'll give like a brief recap so uh jeremy clarkson host of former host of top gear and uh the grand tour which is also on amazon uh he has a farm up in northern England, up in the uh, area called the the Cotswolds, and um, I'm trying to remember. I think what he said was a thousand acres, thousand acre farm. That sounds about right. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> so uh, the 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 guy who ran it before retired, and so he decided he was going to run the farm himself. And so the first season is basically him trying to run this farm, and uh, most of the time it's going horribly wrong. Uh, he, I remember he bought a tractor without checking to see what kind of hitch it had. Yes, yeah, that was the first episode. Um, it was a Lamborghini, by the way, a Lamborghini tractor. That's why he bought it because it's a Lamborghini. <laughs> uh, but um, so, but anyway, so he he tries to do all this different. So one of the things he did was sh uh, he tried sheep farming uh, and lambing, which that, you know, which he, he, he kind of enjoyed a little bit, but it wasn't very, uh, cost effective. Mm. Uh, so he couldn't, uh, so he had to move on from that. And, um, then there were a bunch of, I mean, he has his hat and like a bunch of stuff. And of course, uh, when you look at the, the image here, so you got Clarkson in the middle, uh, over on the left, um, you've got, that's his girlfriend, Lisa, who's Irish. Uh, and then the guy on the far left, uh, that's Charlie, or as Jeremy calls him, uh, cheerful Charlie, quote unquote, um, because Charlie's, he's kind of like this, uh, he's kind of like an advisor for him, but he's, he's the guy who always tells Clarkson, like, if Clarkson wants to do something, Charlie is there to kind of tell him, uh, you might not want to do that. That's not a very good idea. You know, he's, he's the one who kind of like pulls him in to, you know, pulls him back. Uh, and then on the right, you've got, uh, that's Caleb. Uh, he's the, the young farmhand, and he is a country boy through and through. I mean, he never, uh, he's never left this little area of England, or he only left it one, uh, before the first season, he only left it once for a school trip. He went to London, and he, he didn't get off the bus because he was so scared. <laughs> 
and then, and then in the first season, Clarkson sends him into London to sell wasabi. Oh. <laughs> so he's he's driving his pickup truck around London. He's just like, oh god. Uh, and uh, but then the guy on the far on the far right, that's Gerald, and he's uh, Clarkson's uh, head of security. He's the guy who like puts up the fences and everything. And, and he has and, this... and the proud owner of a mullet. It, yes, proud owner of a mullet. And uh, he and he he has the thickest Northern English accent you will ever hear. You can see you can go there and then the two freaks. You know, he, he's talking to like Clarkson and somebody else, and Clarkson's just like, mm -hmm, Yeah, okay, <laughs> I can't understand what you're saying, but all right. <laughs> um, so, uh, but then second season, <clears throat> um, Clarkson, uh, of course, uh, runs into uh, he has a bit of a pickle because. Uh, he's about to lose. Uh, he's uh, stands to lose eighty two thousand pounds in farm subsidies from the European Union because of Brexit. So he has to find a way to diversify and try to make more money. And he decides uh, the way to do that is with cows. Uh oh. Yeah. So yeah. So he he gets a uh, he gets a bunch of cows because uh, he's going to get you know a lot of beef and. Uh, and uh, his his grand plan is to have a restaurant where he sells the beef, and then of course he and he has chickens and and lamb and all all a bunch of other hmm. stuff. I have a failing business venture. What's a steady, dependable, sure to succeed restaurant or venture I can get to? I know restaurants. They always last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I thought the same thing when he said that. I went, "Oh God, that's a bad idea." <laughs> but, um, but so what? But uh, so that's the whole arc of the season is him trying to get this restaurant going. And at first, he decides he's going to turn the lambing farm, which is actually next to his farm shop. That was in the first season. Was he starts up a farm shop, um, and then he's going to turn the lambing barn into the restaurant. Well, most of the uh, difficulties that, or actually, all of the well, actually, the majority of the difficulties he ran into was uh, was with the town council uh, of the town that where his farm is because uh, they they don't like him very much. <laughs> yeah, what was it something he said repeatedly? Uh, well, something he said and something he has done and things he's done too. Uh, you know, there, there is uh, in, in the grand tour, uh, he makes a bet with James May and Richard Hammond that if this one car isn't the fastest car on this track, they could. Uh, demolish his house and sure enough that's what happened and so Richard Hammond and James made well, not not only well they didn't demolish the house they blew it up <laughs> so that was that was in the first season we're like well you know you know he blew his house up and, and you know um, oh, so uh, but yeah so he you know he does everything fights tooth and nail to do it and um what, and of course, they won't let him do it. And uh, and finally, he uh, mild spoiler alert: he has this other like old barn that's on his property. Mm -hmm. And there's like a a little rule that said that uh, if a, if a building's been on your land for more than ten years that you've owned for more than ten, if it's been there for more than ten years, you could do whatever you want with it. So he just says, "Okay, well, I'll just turn that into a restaurant." And of course in the last episode when they're opening it up, it's, you know, just pandemonium where, you know, he's Clarkson oh, says, course. you know, hey, yeah, Clark, yeah, it was funny as he said, you know, I really didn't want this to be like one of those reality shows where, you know, on opening day, all these things go wrong, but everything went wrong. <laughs> sounds like they need to get the, uh, what's his name in there to, uh, uh, Hell's Gordon, Kitchen guy. Yeah. yeah Gordon, Gordon Ramsay. Ramsay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought that too. I'm like, Oh, I wonder if Clarkson's going to call up Gordon Ramsay it, for help. There'd be an explosive crossover. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, it, what I actually liked is that it's not just, it's not a carbon copy of the first season. Mm -hmm. I mean, they actually do do some different things. Um, and you know, they, the, there's some more, um, interactions, you know, between all the different, you know, characters, quote unquote, for, for the show. And, um, it's, you know, it's, it's still really fun. It, you know, it's fun to watch and it's, it's fun to see Clarkson just, you know, being Clarkson and mm -hmm. doing Jeremy Clarkson things. Yeah. You know. Clarkson it up. Yes. 
So, I mean, so, I mean, and it's, it, what's good about this show too, is you don't have to know anything about farming to, to enjoy it. Cause Jeremy certainly doesn't. No, no, Jeremy <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, if you got Amazon prime, give it a, give it a look, you know, first two seasons are up. So. Yep. So yeah. on to the box office. Yes. Um, this will be a shorter analysis than we often do because boy, this week was just dead. Yeah. Nothing got over 10 million. Uh, the new magic Mike's movie came in with eight, eight point three in its opening weekend, which uh, yeah. that is not encouraging. The, the no. cowards were too scared to actually list a budget here. Of course. Let's see if uh, if I look up on Wikipedia. Wikipedia sometimes has it up. Well, I'm uh, really curious how much they would want to. That's serious. There's the last dance. What the? Why did they make another one? The previous one had a budget <laughs> of forty-five million, and its box office was twenty-two point one million. What? Yeah, why, why why would they do another one? Wait a minute. Is that okay? Was that, never, was that never box mind. Or, oh. Never mind. I thought it was like the, the final tease is the um, is a tagline for this movie. Never mind. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So forty five million. Okay. 45. So it's not a it's not a huge bomb yet. My my yeah. bad. I forgot how many of these movies there were. Yeah. Because I think I think this is the third one. Yeah, like, what, what do you know? DB is an inter- series about male strippers. Like, who, who, who would have guessed? Yeah, yeah, same here. Like, yeah. And uh, hey, D Rhino, good to see you. Um, so you know, it's a pretty reasonable budget. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's doing a mix of business nationally and internationally. Probably won't do too bad for itself. Though, like at that rate, we're looking at like actually. Hmm. Uh, it depends on how much they spent to market this thing. Like if they did the, like, we'll just be conservative and say, cause I, I don't think I saw, I don't think they had a commercial in the Super Bowl for it. No, I, I didn't see one. So we'll just do like the traditional <clears throat> one and a half times budget yeah. to get the marketing. 67 then, and a half. Ooh, ooh, no. 135 no. million. That's yeah, going to no. have to have some legs. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't even seem to have a front load. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of one. They're gonna have to gonna have to get a lot of wine moms to go see that movie. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is the wine moms seem to be seeing eighty for Brady, which in its second weekend dropped about um, a little over fifty percent, which is not bad for for yeah. most movies in general. No, that's true. That's yeah, that's pretty good, especially especially considering it was Super Bowl weekend. So in theory, the people who'd be interested in seeing a movie about people being eighty for Brady would have uh, been at home watching the Super Bowl anyway. True. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically on tr- on track with itself. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, good, good for those four. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see here. The only other interesting thing is they have the Titanic 25th anniversary, which I wonder if that's stealing some of the Magic Mike Thunder, because I have to imagine that there's Ooh. some overlap between those two audiences. Probably, yeah. Well, well, those are, yeah, those those are two movies you will not not catch me going to see in the theater. <laughs> Titanic, maybe just for the last scene, but not Magic Mike. Yeah, yeah. Puss in Boots is still knocking out, rounding out the top five. Um, knock, knock at the at cabin, kind of the... tanked. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah. It did really tanked. Yeah, more than sixty. Yeah, Ooh. even though they added more theaters. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, although this is significant because this is only the either the first or the second weekend where okay second weekend where Avatar wasn't uh, the number one, yeah. so it's uh, any hope it had of beating the first one is kind of gone. I think. Unless they do a unless they do a re-release later in the year, <laughs> it, but and most of these re-releases aren't really making that much money. Yeah. Um, still got Python. Yeah, I think that's, we don't have anything new here. 
I as know. far as new stuff coming out this weekend, um, we have, of course, Ant-Man and the Wasp and Quantumania, so expect to see a lot of these knocked out. Yeah. We also have the Kaguya-sama Love is War movie coming out, oh. of all things. Yeah. Uh, I am not going to be seeing this because my opinion of uh, Kaguya-sama Love is War is that... Um, yeah, February, Australia. I, I saw it on... Uh, it's, it's not this weekend, it's soon. My opinion of that series is that will-they-won't-they they stories are fine, but when you're, the premise of your will-they-won't-they they story is the two sides actively think that whoever wills first is a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and so like the, it's all, most of the scenes are in their heads where they refuse to show any outward sign of it. It's a, it's a amusing premise in theory, but it just, just annoyed the heck out of me. Yeah, yeah. And Ninja Toe says the, the first opening is stuck in his head. Well, okay. Those, the, the Kaguya Sama anime themes are top tier because they brought in like a famous disco singer who I think might have done some giant robot shows, if memory serves. I, you have to fact check. Oh, me on wow. That. But either way, like, it, yeah, it's uh, even if I don't like the show, I always watch the openings. Yeah. My Spotify is very weeby. Sidebar, remember back when if you wanted to listen to an anime song, you had to first figure out how it was described because nobody ever had like English like, or Robaji titles. Yeah. And then you had to like go find a torrent somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That, to try and find it and hopefully not get a virus along with it. Oh, yeah. Now it's just Spotify. Everything just drops on Spotify. So if you want to listen to the, your favorite anime theme, you might have to figure out the. You, know, you might have to copy paste the, the the characters into Spotify, but it's basically there. Yeah. So that's uh, uh that, that's that's one of the marches of technology I've appreciated. It's made it much easier to just cut myself off of most mainstream music because I have alternatives. Yeah. And well, yeah, and and mainstream music today's mainstream music sucks. Yep. But, uh, okay, sidebar over. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at the home video, which we didn't really preview. Let's see here. Oh, the, nope, sorry. Uh, we want the DEG. DEG. So our good friend Black, Ad Black Adams is still up there. As his top gun. Is this the same list from last week? Uh, it looks like it, but for the week ending February 4th. Oh, they didn't update it yet. They haven't updated it yet. Oh, jeez. Okay, I was going to say, this looks very monotonous. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, well, let's just, uh, uh, yeah, that's where okay. we just were. There we go. Let's see if they have, let's see if they've updated on their own site. Maybe they just aren't playing nice with, uh, the numbers right now. doesn't look like it. No, nope, weekend ended in two on February 4th. So no. Interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. interesting. Um, well, um, so okay, we want to have well. something. Um, let's see if that weekly Blu-ray chart, November twenty-second. Come on, man! Oh, <laughs> Did they just decide to consolidate everything into the DEG week? I, I guess so. Okay, how about the Netflix? May twenty-fifth, twenty twenty-two. <laughs> Come on, the numbers be better. <laughs> yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> um, we, we need yeah. content here <laughs> you're not okay. helping <laughs> okay so clearly um, they decided to stop with the individual tracking here on November in November of 2022 and switched over to the DEG but now the DGEG hasn't updated in two weeks so uh, I don't know what to say I don't know either uh, I think we can guess, though. Of course, part of the reason that seemed plausible is that there really hasn't been a huge digital release that could have knocked Black Adam out of there. That's true. But uh, what I'll be interested to see when they finally have numbers again is yes. uh, is if uh, you see any sort of signs of life from previous Ant-Man movies. Yes. With, with Quantumania coming out. 
Yeah, that that would be interesting. Yeah, because usually when a when a sequel is coming out, the the first one will pop up. I mean, we saw that with Avatar and um, uh, what else? Knives out. Like, yeah, Knives Out. Yeah, Knives Out. Doctor, I think Doctor Strange might have. I can't remember. But uh, yeah. but yeah. Yep. Um, so I guess that's the end of our uh, current box office charts. So yes. let's change gears a little bit. On Sunday, there was a Super Bowl, which yes. the Kansas Chiefs won. And, um, but of course, that's only half the experience. The other half is they dropped a bunch of movie trailers. And there's yes. two that we're going to take a look at because uh, I'll go, go and stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, because the Transformers one, it's in the same continuity as Bumblebee. So that's probably going to be worth a watch. And Beast Wars was the Transformers I grew up on. So I, I liked Dinobot the best. I was a dinosaur kid. I'm still a dinosaur guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I, don't, I didn't really have a strong take on it. And Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, we basically know that that movie is DOA. Yeah, yeah. So why why waste the oxygen? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't want to talk about that movie. It's. Ugh. I don't think that I would be even interested in a good Indiana Jones five. Truth be told. I wouldn't either. It's just I. Yeah. I. I to me, to me, Indiana Jones ended with uh, the Last Crusade. Yep. That's the that's the that's the proper way to look at it. Yeah, it, it's it's what I call it's the Star Wars psychological defense. Boy, it's weird that Disney bought Star Wars and never made any movies off of it except for that Rogue One. Oh well, yeah, and and that one TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, so uh, the two trailers. Well, you already saw one of the trailers we're going to look at. Um, it's the Flash, and um, go ahead and start playing it here. So as is our want, we don't watch it with audio because we don't want to attract the wrath of the gods. Yes, and we'll be stopping it periodically so we don't get copyright. And then there's Batman. So I, I, I honestly hadn't realized that Ben Affleck Batman was in this until I saw people pointing it out. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's there's uh, uh, and there's there's Ezra, everyone's um, favorite. They recast his dad. Did they? Oh. Yeah, um uh uh god what was his um uh Billy Crudup played his dad in Justice League. And the the, the guy playing his dad now, that's um uh the guy from Office Space. Hmm. Peter Gibbons. Hey oh. Peter. What's oh, the, the, the main character. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hadn't seen him anything for a while, so I guess the I guess that explains where he went. The only the only other thing I ever saw him in was Band of Brothers. Oh, I've seen a few episodes of that. I didn't realize he was in there. Yeah. Um, uh, here, as we are casually talking over Barry Allen's mother being yep. horribly sick and dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or to be injured and dying because the whole thing was that her his dad was blamed. Yeah, and it was, of course, um, well, I, I don't know how it is in this continuity. but it <laughs> It's was... almost certainly going to be Ezra Miller playing prof um, a reverse Flash. It was me, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! <clears throat> Remember that time you tried to have uh, a Capri Sun, and the straw bent instead of going through the little hole. That was me, Barry. I pre-bent the straw so that you look like an idiot in front of your your crush on the playground. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep. And there he is. With himself, oh, God. It, you know, it's hilarious to me that with all the controversy and everyone hating Ezra Miller, and of course, this is where we get two Ezra Millers, possibly three, if the rumors are to be believed, and he's playing Professor Zoom. Yeah, you okay, got the ring. Kind of cool that we got the flash ring. Yeah. Oh yeah, there is Ben Affleck. I, I guess ben I was Affleck. looking down during the party. Yeah. <clears throat> he looks skinnier. Um, he's probably not hitting the bottle quite as hard, and he's been. And not quite as horribly depressed because he's being jerked around by Warner Brothers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and little, he's he, and he's he's back with J Lo. <laughs> I thought they were separated again. I I don't know. 
I can't. I, can't I don't. They, they were in a Super Bowl commercial together, so that's. Yeah. Also, I have no idea when this was actually shot because there have been so many reshoots on this darn movie. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they got the Man of Steel. Yeah, that that was yeah. such a weird thing. Like th this is one of those things where this movie was written on the assumption that. Uh, the Man of Steel and Batman v Superman were going to be super well received, so of course audiences will want to see something built off of that. Yeah, it, it, well, it, 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 I will say you got you got Michael Shannon here back as Zod. I mean, that's yeah, that, that, I, he was good as Zod. Yeah, I liked him as Zod. Uh, Four out of five stars would kneel again. Yes. And of course, if you know anything about the uh, Flashpoint story, uh, he goes to get Superman, who's been locked away. But um, of course, we all know what happened with, with Superman in this universe. Now it's Supergirl. Yeah. And then, of course, okay, here's the Batcave. And drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. Here's good. <laughs> yeah, Michael Keaton Batman has returned. At least, I, at least we'll get to see him in one thing, even if they canceled the other stuff. Yeah, yeah he was supposed. They were supposed to do a, um, a, a bring him back, weren't they? We're, we're like Batman well, Beyond, I think. Well, there was talk of a Batman Beyond. But I don't think that was too far along, and of course, he was going to be in Batgirl. Right. Which got and, completely erased from history. Yes, um, and he was originally going to be. So it's it's weird. He was going to be an Aquaman too, uh -huh. and then they re they decided to uh, cut out the references to this movie because they were going to try to keep the Snyderverse going with some of the original actors. They reshot his scenes with Bat with a. Uh, uh, Affleck. Adam, with yeah. that, with Batfleck, excuse me. Yeah, and then apparently. Now they're going the James Gunn route. Is like forget this nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're just c cutting all references to Batman out of this movie. Yeah, and, and we'll just shove it out there to die. I, it will not. It will not surprise me if if um, if he's he, if he isn't front and center with a lot of the marketing on this movie. Oh, oh yeah, because like very few people really like his version of the flash people can tolerate his version of the flash yeah but but, they, but a lot of people really, really still it. yeah yeah a lot of people really still uh yeah people still really liked michael keaton's batman i i mean mm -hmm. that's that's what i grew up on you know i'm going to make a weird confession i've somehow managed to see batman 3 and 4 from those 90s movies but i've never actually seen the first two Really? Right. Well, it's like when they came out, I was too young, and my parents wouldn't let me see it. And just one of those things you just never get around to, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah here's Supergirl. Whoa. Uh, see, that looks terrible to me. Yeah, I, this is that, that looks awful. After all these, after all these reshoots, how do we have that? I don't know. Yeah, and um, I, I will. Here, here's what. Oh, yes, of course. It, Every why does every trailer have to end with a joke? People like jokes, but I I, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I it just yeah, but but uh, well, here's the here's the other thing too. It gets me like the the actress who plays Supergirl. Like I don't know if you've seen like just normal pictures of her. I don't like, think I have. She's actually an attractive young lady, and they made her look really ugly in this movie. Um, but I mean, I, but yeah, just I mean, you know, the the trailer looks okay in my opinion. Uh, there, there there's some parts in there. Obviously, I mean, obviously, Michael Keaton's Batman. Um, right. That that's a draw itself. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if that's going to be enough to get me to go see this movie. No, that that feels like. How to put it? I feel like this is going to be one that'll probably get good numbers on HBO Max, mm -hmm. and there's going to be if they look at the if they look at the um, analytics, huh? It's weird. Like a lot of people seem to be skipping a lot of the movie and just going right to the first time Michael Keaton shows up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I predicted that we would be if we had access to the numbers, we would notice that. Yeah, yeah, because because unfortunately they haven't made this Flash an interesting character. No, no, he's 
And and uh, yeah, I I find I I didn't like him all that much in Justice League, and then and of course everything everything that's happened with Ezra Miller, I'm just like no, yeah, no. Both versions of Justice League, he was he was kind of insufferable, and I think the the moment that killed him was that whole stupid brunch joke. It's yeah. like okay, so the reason that the shawarma thing in Avengers was kind of funny was because. It was a, I, th- I think that's what a lot of people have tried to imitate since then, mm-hmm. including Marvel itself. The reason the shawarma thing in Avengers didn't work is that shawarma is a, or at least was until a billion people heard about it from that movie, a relatively obscure type of food. Yes. Uh, it's a relatively obscure type of food. And the, co- the context of the conversation was that them in the middle of a harrowing situation doing gallows humor about what they'll do after they get out of the scenario that none of them might survive. Yeah. And then that, then in the trail, in the end credits, the jump cut to them all just completely exhausted, leaned it, back and so yeah, slowly and, eating shawarma as they, yeah, as yeah. they try to recover from warring with an alien army, which, and that's, that scene was actually added much later. Uh, they, that was kind of a last, that was the last minute scene. Like, hmm. uh, if if you watch the scene, like uh, Chris Evans is sitting like this, you don't really see his face because oh. he had a beard <laughs> for another movie. Oops. <laughs> so, uh, but but yeah, it, it's. I mean, but meanwhile, yeah. what yeah. kind of idiot doesn't know what brunch is? I don't. know. It's like building a and like. And the weird thing is, like, it's treated like that, that's the intelligence level of the audience. Like, a Homer Simpson or a Peter Griffin not knowing about brunch. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Like, yeah, but, I mean, but... You know, Marge, I'm a little afraid to admit this, but I've never quite understood what brunch is. It's yeah. like great shame. Homie, it is, oh, it's okay. We'll get over this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, that, like, a character who's supposed to be he he's supposed to be like smart enough to be a forensic scientist, right? That's he like that's part of his like he can go to school for that. He's just trying to get his dad out of jail and is obsessed with that, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, that is not a man who is uh, qualified. I, I wouldn't want him to install a toaster oven in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I say, DB, you don't install toaster ovens. You just put, you just plug them in and put them on your counter. Exactly. I wouldn't trust a person who didn't know what brunch was, with English was his first language, to install a toaster oven. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So it's like you, you, it, it didn't work in the least. And no. I, I think that was in both the Snyder and the Whedon cuts, if I recall right. Uh, I know it was in the Whedon cut. I can't remember if it was in the Snyder. Yeah, like a lot of people attribute a lot of stuff to the to the Whedon cut that turned out to be done by Snyder. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's the Flash. Where, where you know, we spent very little time talking about how cool the movie looked because it doesn't really look all that polished. No, it doesn't. And, yeah, and, and and the promise of two Ezra Millers, it's like it's like the universe is mocking us. Yeah, yeah. It's just ugh. It's like, oh, what's that? You don't want uh, you don't want any Ezra Miller. Well, you get two of them, maybe three <laughs> if he's playing Reverse Flash. Ah, uh, jeez. Yeah, well, that's. Yeah, I, I I'm curious to to know where where a lot of that 300 million went because it didn't go into the CGI. Reshoots are expensive, whether the CGI is finished or not. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but uh, but in addition to uh, the Flash, we also had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which I am somewhat looking forward to. This one. Yes, um, this is probably a movie I would be willing to see in theaters. Yes, me too. Uh, so let's get this going here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Gamora's back. Okay. Well, this is still fake Gamora. That, yeah. That, that was one of like the. That was one of the worst missteps, in my opinion. Like, yeah. they shouldn't have bothered to bring her back. Yeah. They. Yeah. It. It. it kind of diminished the whole 
thing with her dying, you know, because of Thanos. Right. Well, you know, it's like <clears throat> if 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 I don't know if if you died, and then a time lost version of you from five years ago showed up, and I just acted like you hadn't died, like that. Yeah, it's kind of extremely disrespectful. And, yeah. Exactly. Now, especially if you had died to save me. Uh, yeah, or, or, exactly. or if you had died in the process of trying and failing to save me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, any idea who this is? No, that actually that that isn't War Machine. No, I, the way that's War Machine. That looks all wrong. It, that's not. Um... I couldn't quite tell from this angle with enough. C, there's like enough CGI going on in the scene that I couldn't discount it. Yeah, um, he's kind of got the RoboCop thing going with the. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I know see. we're supposed to get Adam Warlock in this movie, which, and Adam Warlock is one of those characters where, oh, he's probably this mad scientist who's experimenting on on rocket. Rocket. Okay. So we get a little bit of Rocket's origins. Yeah, they touched on that in the Telltale game, uh, yeah. which I need to go back and finish at some point. I got like three chapters in and then just stopped for whatever reason. I'm actually kind of glad where we've got the we've got this muted because I forgot that they oh. play a lot of music. Yeah, <laughs> we, we we would get slammed with a copyright claim. Yep. Oh, there's Adam Warlock. Yeah, which Adam Warlock is the most like the only the only things I've ever read with Adam Warlock really are yeah. things where. Jim Starlin is writing a Thanos comic, and he likes to use him as Jesus to Thanos' uh, Satan all the time. Uh, yeah. Well, it's definitely uh, definitely up in the action. Yep. A lot of creative visuals here. Yeah. One of the things I noticed, too, is that uh, Drax is usually fully clothed, probably because... Uh, Batista didn't want to go through that much makeup. <laughs> that much makeup, and you know, he might have let his um, bod demuscle oh, a little bit. Yeah, and then can't, yeah. can't blame him. And of course, got another joke thing at the end here. That fits Guardians better than the Flash. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> See, I, I think the better version um, might have been to have what's what's the Nexus? Is that no? What's the blue one's name? Nebula. Nebula. Thank you. Would have been to have like uh, not have Gamora around and have Nebula be dealing with that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they, and uh, it, it, it's good that it's good that they have her around because they really uh, obviously they fleshed her out really well with, in uh, Endgame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, G Gamora, I, I hope that, I hope she isn't just like shoehorned in there. Yeah. Or that they aren't repeating the first movie too much. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say that this is probably the only Marvel movie that I've, in the next couple of years that I'm interested in seeing myself. Yeah. Same here. I, I, um. You know, I, 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 you know, I like the first two movies, and you know, I'd like to see where their where their story ends, where their journey ends. You know. Yep. Um, at, le at, at least with James Gunn directing it, they, you know? they better not kill Rocket. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally anybody else in the cast, I'd be fine with, but not Rocket. No, not Rocket. Well, Leave that poor eat, raccoon yeah. alone. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't kill you can't kill Groot again because you know. No. I mean, you could. It wouldn't be the first time they repeated themselves, but. Yeah, that's true. But if you even want to do Baby Groot again. <laughs> we sold a lot of toys. Don't don't underestimate. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, well, uh, you know, well, I, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic for that one. So. Yeah. Yep. So and yeah. yeah, so and then of course we also had trailers for Transformers and Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, yeah. like we said, we not wasting the oxygen. No. Transformers, it's in the Bumblebee universe. It looks like it should be at least somewhat interesting to see 
that kind of approach taken to a larger cast. Yeah. And uh, I, I know um, um, the, the character Mirage, I guess, is one of the one of the main Transformers they focus on. Um, and I looked it up. Uh, the, the guy who does the voice of Mirage. Mm-hmm. It's um, it, you watched uh, you watched Ted Lasso, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the 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 Hispanic player. Oh, who, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's the voice of Mirage. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Which is funny because he's a kind of a silent character in Ted Lasso. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, be interesting, be an interesting uh, movie going experience. But uh, yep. And uh, so moving on to uh, I don't know, I, I my transition game stinks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, well, logically, we'd be talking about Ant Man next, but I, I think we just have like a little thing that isn't even going to qualify as its own video here. Hey, you know how the whole world was like, or it felt like if you were on Twitter, the whole world was like, only evil people want to play Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. yeah. Turns out there's a lot of evil people out there. Yes. <laughs> now, let's talk a little bit about caveats when you see these types of numbers. Um, so nowadays most games are purchased digitally i do like to buy disc games when i have the opportunity just because one i kind of like to support retail but also two i feel like uh, you have a better chance of uh, being able to play something off of it yeah although i have this sneaking suspicion that the current generation of video games they're probably going to find a way to eke out um, ownership for these for a while because PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, even three, even some 360 games, they're like kind of a continuous service at this point. Yeah. So here's hoping they kind of have figured out that Steam magic. Yes. <laughs> but uh, when you see numbers like this, uh, the UK reports physical sales um, now there's like a more transparent reporting system, but it means that you're getting kind of a skewed look and it's not going to represent what you see in the U S market. Like Xbox mm-hmm. is a bigger part of the American market than it is in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, but a uh, Hogwarts legacy is right up there at the top for the 11th of February. And, uh, also at the top of the Japanese console retail chart. Which is interesting because I, I had sort of had the idea that Harry Potter was a big deal in Japan. I did not realize how big of a deal it was. Yeah, it's it's pretty popular over there. Yeah, like uh, oh, like like all the VTubers I'm aware of, they all basically like all the Japanese VTubers basically went and wanted to play Hogwarts. <laughs> Most of them ended up being Slytherin. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Um, but uh, a, a co-worker of mine playing this is we're talking about how you can troll and abuse small children. Uh, <laughs> there, there seems to be no consequences for going full renegade. Uh, so you can have you can have whatever fun you like with it. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's also up from the previous, uh, up 64% higher than the first week of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone from 2001, the previous bestseller. I feel like it is useless to talk about how this game is doing compared to other Harry Potter games, considering that there's never been a Harry Potter game in this current era of licensed games. Yeah. Like, th- when the Harry Potter movies were coming out, we were still in the generation of, oh, a movie's coming out? Quick, rush something to market. So that confused grandmas who think their kids like the Iron Man get something for their Wii. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ninja Toe says uh, his last name was uh, was a restricted word, so he had to be Jonathan Joestar. <laughs> yeah, I guess the timeline works out. You're just learning yeah. your Haman in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... Um, yeah, I think yeah. basically uh, it's still at the top of Steam, which, uh, well, you know, Forspoken is nowhere to be seen still. And our, our friend uh, Hi-Fi Rush is still in the top 50 after three weeks. So That's good. 
Yep. So it's, you know, considering it's a single player game, those are going to pop and fade. That That's part of why everybody wants to have a live service games, even if it seems to be a dying breed, or at least a wounded breed. Yeah, yeah. Because it is consistent. Um, but yeah, really, basically it's just, uh, what do you know? Boycotts typically don't work. They don't yep. typically work when... Um, when they're things that I don't like, and they typically don't work when they're things I do like. Since I'm kind of neutral on this, although the guy at work is making this game sound kind of fun, but if I wasn't trying to get my life back by beating Persona 5 Royal right now, <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally getting to hang out with Kasumi more. <laughs> after they teased her the whole game. <laughs> yeah. I got what I wanted. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe if maybe if there's a sale, I'll pick it up. But, yeah. Uh, I, I also yeah. I, I'm I'm reluctant to, to ascribe much to um, the boycott mm -hmm. uh, that the people like you know some people have been saying oh I bought two copies just because no one tells you what I can play. I don't think there's too many people actually doing that. Yeah, I don't I don't think so either. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Ninja is trying to start a Persona 5 fan war here. So Kasumi is best girl. Uh, I'll, I might go into this more when I finally beat the game. In fact, that could be... Uh, actually, no. Daniel's only played the non-royal version. So he has no context on Kasumi. No, I don't. So, so the thing about Kasumi is, is that she is introduced... So she is a character for the royal expansion. She is introduced early on, and she just... They didn't really integrate her into the plot. She just shows up occasionally, and mm -hmm. it's it's just like it's it's you're designed to be intrigued by her because she shows up, you have a nice interaction, then she leaves. Yep. Um, at one point, at a critical moment, she offers to join the uh, the Phantom Thieves, and it's like Joker. Why are your answers no and other no? <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> of course, choice in that game is uh, in dialogue is a, is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I, I she, so she is designed to be intriguing. She's a very sweet girl. She has some interesting things going on. I'll say that one of the strengths of Persona Five is that I actually had what she was like, what her deal was, spoiled to me because I was looking up something else, and. Uh it was intriguing enough that I didn't actually mind that I was spoiled. It's like, okay, I want to see how this plays out. Yeah. 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 I, I, um, I, I got to get back to, I got to do persona five Royal at some point. Yeah. The comic takes priority. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Comic book takes priority. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's still a fun play, but um, yeah. that, 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 I think I have another character who I might call best girl, but again, that's for a maybe future stream. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> DB and Daniel's top five persona five girls. <laughs> Definitive <laughs> list. Yes. <laughs> uh, will it be the big titty goth doctor? Will it be the 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 uh the hot for teacher maid? Will it be the <laughs> will it be the adult blonde psychologist or psychic? Will it be the, the class president who might be stepping on you? <laughs> we'll, find, we'll find out. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, because we're having entirely too much fun here. Yes. Ant-Man. Ant-Man, yeah. So Ant-Man has an interesting distinction. Uh, it is now the second lowest rated Marvel movie by critics. Uh, MCU movie by critics. Mm. Number one, of course, is still held by. You can guess it. Um, what movie did everybody agree was awful? Critics and fans alike. Eternals. Eternals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie was horrible. <clears throat> not, not, not even remotely fun. No. Um, this one seems to be. Uh, What's kind of weird about it, and several people have pointed this out, it's like the critics all got notes. Okay, guys, mm -hmm. we can't hide the fact that this isn't a good movie, but you got to talk up Jonathan Majors as King mm -hmm. because we're kind of building him up as a thing. 
and we kind of need people to be uh, be tricked into seeing this movie so they can see Kang. Yeah, and uh, and maybe in in bonus if we can trick them into watching Loki. Yes, uh, get get some more watches on that. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. When I when I heard that Kang was going to be in this, I thought uh, it didn't it didn't make any sense to me because you know Kang is a he's an Avengers level villain like Thanos, right? And you put him in an Ant Man movie after you put him in a Loki movie, and I think he's been defeated both times. Yeah, uh, and I I I, um, I watched uh, Film Threats uh, review of it. Uh, none of them liked it very much, um, and I can't remember who it was, but one of them said that that uh, Kang really isn't much of a threat in this movie. Well, the problem is that you set him up against Ant Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which is weird. Okay, so. The reviews I've heard haven't really made it sound like a heist movie, which is like the whole fun of Ant Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it sounds like a. Uh, it, it, it sounds like they're trying to do like a like a weird CGI, Avatar esque type thing, and it's just, yeah. <laughs> oh no, an MCU film has broken the critics' love. Anyway, back to the waifu talk. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe maybe if we're not interested in uh, these movies anymore, we should just every week talk about waifus in a different anime. That, yes. That, that, won't, that wouldn't be the slightest bit shameful. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Top tier of 2022. Number one, your. <laughs> your. <laughs> um, but um, but in all sincerity, um, it seems to me that the way you should have set this up would be to have Kang hiding in plain sight in the present mm -hmm. and maybe have it be like uh, he's tied to this reality with some sort of MacGuffin that Ant-Man has to steal. It's a, But like, there's a scene where he confronts Ant-Man or Kang confronts Ant-Man and Kang just pounds him into the ground and he has to use the wasp and his daughter uh to uh the wasp and his daughter to you know like he takes the beating and distracts him while they steal the MacGuffin and destroy it throwing him back into the multiverse mm. like that's the type of thing where you would you would keep the threat of kang established because you it would only be by a plot device right and you'd yeah. still get to show ant-man being cool and resilient yes but the but that's but the, the problem with that db is it makes too much sense you know? <laughs> it, it, yeah also luis is not in this movie which is a freaking war crime yeah if he isn't yeah. in the movie or if he is in the movie it sounds I, I think is he completely absent from the movie i it sounded like he was completely absent from the movie from the reviews i saw yeah let me let me uh well i can take a look at the casting list here yeah uh, every, anybody who watched the first couple of Ant Man movies wasn't Luis great. Like, yeah, he, he was cool. Yeah, like um, there were so many people who were disappointed that the at Avengers Endgame and or either Avengers Endgame or um, event or uh, Infinity War didn't open up with Luis explaining the story up to that point. Yeah, no, he he is not in it. Boo! 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 I thought you guys liked diversity. Boo! Yeah. <laughs> One of the most prominent Hispanic characters who wasn't a fish man, and you cut yeah. him out of the movie. Boo! Yeah. Boo. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, we can't have nice things. No. Okay. Th there goes any credit I was willing to extend this movie. I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ninja Toast says top tier 23 so far. Corsica. From uh, Hi Fi Rush. That, that's a fine choice. Yeah. But, um, uh, but it, yeah. you know, I, I think I've said everything I want to say about this movie because <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to go see it. But, like the second movie yeah. was uh, like, as much as I want to say that. 
Captain Marvel was the mer was the worst Marvel movie I, I've actually bothered to go watch. Um, mm -hmm. I have to, in my in all good conscience, put Ant Man and the Wasp under it. That was just yeah, a dull experience. It, I wanted to leave the movie theater partway through. It, I, 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 it, it was very dull. Yes. I thought. It, yeah. The the only interesting scene in that one was when he was like riding the truck like a skateboard. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, and the only reason you need to watch that movie is for the end credit is the end credit scene. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, I'm going to just completely destroy Marvel's whole business model here. <laughs> Do you actually need to see the end credit scene? Yeah, could, maybe you could just use context clues when you go see Avengers: uh, Infinity War or yeah. Endgame to figure out. Oh, Ant Man popped out of the quantum realm. I guess that's where he was the whole time. Yeah, uh, might not be. Ne it might not be totally necessary, but it, it, it would probably help. Yeah, although thanks to Disney Plus, you just wait two months. Fast forward to the movie, see what's in the end credits because that's what matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although it, from yeah, uh, although from what I hear, the end credits on this one are, isn't that spectacular. Um, spoiler alert for something I haven't seen. It sounds like it's leading up to another season of Loki. Oh. And I I think uh, I think too they they kind of tease the Fantastic Four. Hmm. I didn't hear about that, but it's but that yeah, is certainly but, a thing that could happen. Yeah, I, I we don't we don't need a season two of Loki. No, at the very least, I hear that Owen Wilson is in it, so it's yeah, it's it's, and, it's pointing at Loki. Yeah, and 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 for I heard Owen I heard Owen Wilson was Owen Wilson, you know, as he always is. Yes. <clears throat> uh. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I don't have anything much more to add either. I, I, yeah, like you, I don't, I don't plan on seeing this movie in the theater. Uh, I was very, I was very mum on it to begin with. I had like a maybe a little bit of interest just to see maybe, you know, what it could be. But then, like, then the more I hear about it, the more I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I can skip this one. Yeah. Yeah, let's 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 take a little tour here through. I'm not going to actually pull up the audience score, but one of the narratives that you get is that the critics are wrong and the audience score is right. I think mm -hmm. there are times when it's a self-selecting thing. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a critic, you're watching you know a, a wide swath of movies, and you're going to have you're going to be looking at it on a technical level. You're going to be looking at it on a um, you know, artistic level, you're going to be, you know, does the plot actually hold together? Is this performance actually convincing, etc.? Yeah. Audiences, ooh, that looks kind of fun. I think I'll go watch that. And so it's it's actually less kind of critical. Yeah. Also, uh, at this point, with we've been seeing viewership in the Marvel movies kind of dipping over the last year. Mm -hmm. At this point, if you're going, you're probably already someone who's drunk the Marvel Kool Aid. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, you're 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 just a, a an unabashed, unapologetic uh, fanboy or fangirl, and you're just going to consume whatever Marvel Disney puts out. <laughs> yep. Which, if that gets you excited, hey, good for you. Yes. The other thing I notice is that, or occurs to me, is that this movie has not actually dropped in the U.S. yet. So this will be the right. international ratings. Yeah, yeah, because it, yeah, it drops tomorrow here. So well, or later tonight for like midnight showings. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how we'll see how things go. Uh, we'll we'll check back in on this. Yes. But, um, um, it sounds like the uh, projections have been dipping. It may not hit 100 million for the three day, which is awful for a movie with a 200 plus million budget. Yeah, because they had to reshoot things to add more pointless Marvel jokes. <laughs> that, that's what we need. Worked out so nicely for for spoken. Yes, yeah, it's an, you know I I uh, every time yeah now nowadays when I see Marvel humor I'm just like stop bantering, not funny. The, the universe is supposed to be in danger. 
Act like it. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Asgard just blew up and you're making making a joke. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, okay, I think that's enough of the Ant-Man. Yeah. Five minutes of rage on Ant-Man. Yes. Um, it, it, we, yes, we, we actually have a special bonus topic. Um, yes, uh, breaking news. Uh, Susan Wojcicki, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is stepping down from YouTube. In a statement to creators earlier, earlier today I sent an email to employees announcing that I'd be stepping back to my role as the head of YouTube to start a new chapter focused on my family, health, and personal projects I'm passionate about. It has been the honor of my career to have a front row at the, to this incredible YouTube community you have built. Front row seat. Uh, your stories of perseverance, creativity, inspiration were a daily source of motivation as I throttled your channels and banned <laughs> pe people who disagreed with the official narrative. Oh, I'm sorry. I might have been editorializing there a little bit. <laughs> were a daily source of motivation inspired me to be an advocate and steward for this community you all created, even if I was actively suppressing parts of the community I didn't like because they... Uh, and uh, getting rid of the dislike system because of a certain presidential administration. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, yeah, the the current head of YouTube is stepping down. Um, Daniel, do you think we're going to see much in the way of actual change? Um, I would say no. Yeah, especially because it looks like it's a totally internal promotion. Uh Longtime yeah. chief product uh, officer, officer Neil Mohan. Yeah, I, I, I don't see. Uh, I, I think it's going to be, you know, it, you know, the, the old, the, the, as the who would say, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah. Huh. Now, um, to be to be fair. Um, so I, I was looking at, I decided, okay, why is this happening? <clears throat> uh, you know, as, as, as much as people in our sphere don't really like Susan all that much, at the same time, it's not like, you know, there's been no scandal that a YouTube has, or a YouTube or Alphabet has to worry about. Yeah. So it could be that after nine years, they she just decided to move on with her life because that is a long time to be at any job especially you know being an executive of any sort is very grueling work yeah yeah it's it's a it's a 24 7 pretty, pretty much a 24 7 job i mean right yeah you're you're constantly working yep Though I decided to do a little bit of digging into the most recent YouTube report. Now we don't have the annual report for 2022, but there are some signs. You almost wonder if they're kind of going, you know, the business isn't quite where we want it to be. Maybe we need a new person in there because mm -hmm. YouTube is still a very like, exceptionally widely used platform. However, uh, you or Google as a whole, or I should say technically Alphabet as a whole, Mm -hmm. has been having a little bit of trouble. So or not, uh, now, not like state of the business is in shambles. The fire sale starts next week. Trouble. Yeah. Like the, they, they're still making the net income for last year was uh, for 2022 was still uh, 60 billion, but mm. that compares to 76 billion in 2021 yes so that's a decline and well what what happened with these <clears throat> by the way this is profit not income because the income actually went up a bit but profit went down which isn't a good sign really yeah yeah because it means that you're working harder and getting less or getting to keep less of it yes yeah which um yeah, is is usually yeah, like you said, not a not a good not a good sign if you're a business. Yeah. Yep. So what's what's going on here? Um, so if you look at um, YouTube ads, we actually see a bit of a decline from 2021 quarter, uh, the the fourth quarter 2021 to 2022, 
of 8.6 billion to uh, 7.96 billion. Mm -hmm. About a 10 percent ish dip, a little bit less. Yeah. And this is reported. I don't. I don't know about you, but I've heard a lot of YouTubers say, "Yeah, this year that you usually get a bump in ad rates around Christmas time." That didn't happen this year. Uh, huh. So yeah. that's not good. Yeah, that's that's like uh, you know that's like not the company's not having holiday parties. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. exactly. Um, now it's also interesting is that there are some things here that you would expect to be profitable that actually weren't. Like uh, Google's cloud services, which is a competitor to Amazon AWS and Microsoft Azure, actually mm -hmm. net loss. Now it's less of a net loss than the previous year, but that's you know, it's like you know, one of those future moonshot businesses, right? That's the cloud is supposed to be a huge source of income. Yeah, yeah. As I recall, Discord runs on Google Cloud because every time they have an outage, uh, Discord goes down. Is it is it Google or um, it's Google? Somebody? It's Google. Okay. It, it, as memory serves, fact check okay. me if I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> but um, let's see here. So YouTube revenue is down. The thing with YouTube is that it's never been consistently profitable. My, my understanding is that it usually operates basically at break even, but it's a very expensive service. Like the, the streaming we're using right now is taking up a fair amount of resources. And since we are monetized, you know, people aren't dropping super chats or getting channel memberships. Since right. we're not monetized, we aren't actually, uh, you know, getting any ad revenue. Right. <clears throat> so. We're just taking up bandwidth. <laughs> we're we're sucking away bandwidth, and the reason they let us do it is because they figure, well, yeah, everyone has to start somewhere. So if we let the small channels come in, they can get big, right? But YouTube also, has the, in recent years, has had something it's never actually had before: significant competition. You know, things like Daily Motion, Rumble, Odyssey; mm -hmm. those are all just. The, they're all just uh, try to think of a non heart like non crass way of putting this. Uh, they aren't a pimple on the ass of Google. Yeah, <laughs> that's the least crass way I could think of expressing that particular concept. <laughs> so you can see that my ideas were pretty crass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now there's TikTok. Hmm. Uh, they've introduced YouTube Shorts. You know what the problem with YouTube Shorts is? They are completely 110% unmonetized, but they still want the, they're still encouraging the creators to make them. And you know, yeah. Which means that they are basically making, hey, creators, yeah, you know how your ad rates are down? Yeah. Here's extra work you have to do for us to promote you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mama YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I, I get to do more work for, for nothing. Yes. Hooray, because you're, because you're worried about TikTok eating your lunch. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like if you're on TikTok, uh, you're not exactly raking in the money either. So. Yeah, and and you're you're putting in um you're getting spyware from a certain country in in of unknown Asia. Origin. Yes, of unknown origin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other thing that's kind of interesting when you think about it is, uh, I, I have to wonder how much the rise of some of these ad-supported tiers of different services. <clears throat> could be impacting them now mind mm -hmm. you like paramount plus peacock netflix well not enough netflix ish mm -hmm. uh twitch well I'll, I'll leave twitch out of it because they're mostly super chats or whatever they call it over there yeah yeah uh, but um you kind of go down the list and you have you have things you have these ad supported things like to be that's for tiers of Paramount Plus. I've never had a Paramount Plus show I've watched where they didn't have an ad to fit the, to fill in the space. Yeah. So it seems like around the same time that all the, these ad rates are going down, all of these streaming services that are losing money hand over fist are going, um, 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 hey, advertisers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yes. Give, give, give us money. We'll, 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 we'll play your ads here. Yeah. Yes, please, please. Uh, you know, don't, don't put yourself on some sort of dangerous extremist YouTube video. Uh, put yourself on a nice, safe episode of Tulsa King. Yes. <laughs> it's got Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your yeah. Put put yourself in on, on um uh well, it, well Peacock. You know, here's here here. Get yourself in an episode of Yellowstone. You know. Yep. Pe- people like Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I I think that so that that isn't helping the ad rates. I wouldn't think. No. So. Though okay, so I don't know that I, I say all this. But thinking it through, I don't think they would have hired internally if it was really the ships are on the, the ship is on fire. We're about to crash into the iceberg situation. Right. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. This is a uh, oh, it's not not great, but you know, could be worse. Yeah. So I do wonder if I, I could see a couple things happening here. This could be a transitional thing where they bring in somebody who knows the business while they're looking for somebody to come in and try and. You know, actually make it profitable. Yeah. Where uh, I think YouTube is running into the problem of it's hard to go from not charging something for something to charging for something. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, <clears throat> of course, you know, you've got like YouTube Premium, which um, I, I do pay for just because the ads were driving me insane. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Um, and and of course, I, you know, YouTube's got their own um, streaming, um, you know, channels uh, service, and and uh, of course, next year, twenty twenty three, they're going to have um, uh, NFL football Sunday ticket, NFL Sunday ticket, which used to be just Direct TV, but now it's going to be YouTube as well. That is not cheap, by the way. <laughs> I think I saw an estimate of two billion, which mm-hmm. if that's what they're actually paying for that. Let's again take a quick look here at uh, what was the. Let's see here. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. YouTube ads for the entire year. Oh, for the. Actually, for let's see. This is for the quarter. Seven yeah. billion. Okay. So that's that's a. If, if it was even across the whole year, that's like 32 billion. Yeah. Okay. That's a more reasonable expense than taking yeah. a quarter of all your revenue. That's yeah. still a big chunk of revenue. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know. They're, I mean, that, that I'm, I'm assuming they're pro- they'll probably charge the same amount of money that DirecTV did, which is like three fifty, four hundred dollars. Yeah. Which I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, uh, I mean, there, there, there's still a lot of football fans out there. They will, they will yep. pay that. They will pay. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and th- this is probably one of those moves that is another nail in the coffin for cable as we know it. Mm-hmm. I will say though, I think we are getting closer to somebody just coming up with a cable package of streaming services. Because I'm yeah. hearing of all people, Fauna over at Whole Life talking about that. Huh. Like, uh, like she when you, when you have normies saying, "Can we just have cable back? Just bundle the streaming services together, please." There's too many of them. We have normies yeah. who aren't involved in culture war, or anything or business analysis anyway, coming up with this idea. You know, there's talks happening somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, there, it wouldn't surprise me yeah, if if something like that doesn't happen in the near future. You, know. you can already kind of do that because you can add certain subscription services onto your Amazon Prime or H or uh, Hulu. Right. Yeah. Like, and uh, yeah, there, there have been some shows I've looked for up on Hulu, and it's like, uh, oh yeah, we, we totally have that if you uh, buy the HBO Max subscription add-on. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's the same with yeah with Amazon Prime. It's like, oh yeah, you can you can watch that show, get Paramount Plus <laughs> <laughs> via Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Paramount Plus via Amazon. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just uh, who's going to be able to unite the services? Mm-hmm. YouTube is actually, in my opinion, up there as a candidate if they can get people to to play to play with it. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think the problem is is that. What I suspect part of that Google Cloud losses is, and I can't, I'm not sure about this. What do you want to bet that Stadia was lumped in under Google Cloud? Probably, yeah. Um, 
Cause I, I think yeah, because technically you didn't you didn't need a console. It was just a right. Yeah. You you needed something that could stream it, and you needed their special controller. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I I can see that either being in Google Cloud or other bets. Other bets being just a general like you know so that's like a big source of loss. They're like one point six billion for the year. Mm -hmm. But that's because other bets is like future oriented research and development. So that's, yeah, it's going to be like a Bell Labs thing where you're trying to advance the technology just for the sake of advancing the technology. And yeah. monetization could come later. Mm. But um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like Google, th this is like a feeling I've had for a while. Like, you think about Amazon, they've got a lot of business segments that they can rely on right they got oh yeah yeah they got the shopping they got the cloud services which are profitable and like the google cloud here yeah you've got um kindle prime is a money pit because of all the shipping and tv shows they buy with it yeah i actually opted out because i said you know 120 i was willing to pay but 140 when when you when you raised the price you sent me an email saying so we can keep making great shows like uh like rings of power it's like <laughs> you know you know what i uh, I, I let it run out and then, but, but they've got whole foods and other mm -hmm. grocery services they basically sell a little bit of everything oh, amazon yeah. is a well diversified company mm -hmm. microsoft windows office Cloud is the big one these days, Xbox, um, and a lot of apps and services you don't realize are Microsoft necessarily. Mm. Um, like they, they've and they've got like that corporate stickiness. Like a company is not likely to suddenly cancel their Office 365 subscription because they're gonna if they if they do switch over to Google Docs. Google Docs isn't free if you're a business. And you're going to have like a lot of transitional costs. People are going to have to learn how to do things again. You might have to change some of your documents to be more compatible. So it's just, uh, yeah. yeah. I, Google, if you look at most of their stuff, it's either uh, it's money wasting things like uh, Google Nest or Google the the Google equivalent of Alexa. Mm -hmm. Like those services burn money, like we've talked yeah. about before. Um, <clears throat> I can't imagine that the Pixel phones are a huge money winner for them because they're selling them at a really reasonable price, which means that they aren't making much margin on it. Uh, like, like realistically. Yeah. Um, they got the app stores and the they got the Google Play app store. They got Chromebooks, but Chromebooks, again, that's an operating system they're basically giving away for free because it's all designed to funnel into Google search to feed google adsense yeah and mind you like this is a you know that's a, that's a rep 42 billion versus 43 billion that's an amount of money that is bigger than most countries in a single quarter yeah <laughs> most countries gdp i should say yeah but we're still looking at a decline year over year during this busiest season of the year in theory mm-hmm so I, I have this sneaking suspicion that while Google has an obscene amount of money, I don't think they're going to be willing to burn it quite as much as they've been up till now. Because if the search starts to falter, then what else do they have? They have bet all the chickens on the search farm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's, um, you know, it's, yeah, that's the, that's the thing we were talking about before is like most people like they use Google just because it's there. Yep, yeah, it's the default. Yeah. They, they they don't think about trying DuckDuckGo, Bing, whatever I think I think Brave uses DuckDuckGo, the browser uses yeah. DuckDuckGo. Nobody uses Yahoo search cuz it's either Google or Bing searches just with an extra step. Yeah. Depending on who they're licensed with right now. Yes. So if you, and I think that's also why they're scared the heck out of TikTok because that's a service they don't control. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're burning money on YouTube and like barely breaking even to run this huge website. 
I think part of the logic has always been that, well, it increases our knowledge of people so we can, on other websites, we can sell things to them better with Google AdSense. But if YouTube starts to slip, I think TikTok may already be a bigger website than YouTube on net. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I've, I think I've heard that. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. So I, I guess what it basically is, is that I think we might actually start seeing some changes at YouTube. I don't think they're going to be for the positive, but I can kind of see on a macro level why, again, like most of the people I say, DB, you're, you're smoking something. 42 billion revenue on Google search in a quarter. That is not a company in decline. It's a billion, it's, it's half a billion less than last year. Yeah. Co companies uh, like to keep making more money, not less money. Yes. That's probably also why we saw Stadia cold unexpectedly with developers not being aware of it. Because like Mr. Google has more money than he knows what to do with. But he do Mr. Google also knows that he doesn't like to burn money. Yeah. <laughs> with no return. Exactly. Yeah. Well. But th that's enough. That that's enough of DB's unhinged rants about tech. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, nothing, nothing wrong with your unhinged rants about tech because tech is very important. Yes, actually, you know what? I think they're pretty hinged rants. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> hinged rants would be a good name for a channel, actually. Yes, yes. I wonder, I wonder if it already exists. Let's find out. <laughs> well, uh, while DB is doing that, uh, thank you everybody for uh, for tuning in. We appreciate it as always. Uh, uh, of course, uh, hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, um, hit the bell for notifications. And, uh, is there, is there a channel? There's not a channel called hinged rants. Get it. I, I saw somebody comics with drew made a video called barely hinged rant, but Ooh. Uh, get that's it, different. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, gotta get it, get it. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Making a note. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, once again, thank you all for, for coming in and uh, we will see you next week. Night, well, everybody. Thanks for joining us.